I'm here with Alexandra Etlin. She's a PhD candidate at the University of St. Gallen and this year's runner-up of the St. Gallen Wings of Excellence Award, the essay competition here at the St. Gallen Symposium. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. To start the interview, let's talk about the, this year's topic, growth, the good, the bad and the ugly. What comes to your mind in just two sentences? I think it's an incredibly timely topic. And what I like about the title is that it shows that it's a very ambiguous concept. It has good and bad sides to it. And in your essay you're writing about alternatives to growth. Why do you think it's actually necessary to, to write about that? Well, I think it's necessary to just involve people in the discussion about growth and also to think about how can we, how can we involve more people in our growth. And now talking about what you wrote specifically, could you just explain your idea in a few sentences? Well, I was thinking how can we... Are there organizations that foster a social and a, pro, and a market dimension, bring this together? And then I know examples of cooperatives in Switzerland, and I think it's a concept that has been forgotten a little bit, and, but I think it can be revived and is even today very timely for some of the issues we're facing. And I guess there are always pros and cons for every organization. What are the disadvantages and advantages you could imagine of cooperatives? Well, some of the advantages are their inclusiveness, not only towards their employees, but also towards the society and their concern for community. Also their focus on long-term thinking. They're not on the stock market. They don't need to worry about their quarterly reports destroying their stock market price or anything. And their solidarity, which counteracts this winner-takes-all market effect, which we're seeing in a lot of markets right now. And some of the disadvantages are their slower decision-making processes because they're actually a democratic organization, which means you involve people in decisions, making them slower. And they're, they're not on the capital market, so the question of capital procurement, especially in the beginning phases, is another challenge for cooperatives. So to quote from your essay, one of the biggest barriers to reconsidering the cooperative concept on a large scale is our own deep-seated acceptance of and fascination with the capitalistic company. Do you think that this will actually change in the future, especially with developments like sharing economy and so on? Well, you know, I think we need more of a mix of different kind of organizations. I don't think we only need cooperatives in the world. That's not the right approach. But I do think that people are becoming aware that we need to open this discourse. We need to, and I think people are ready. They want this sharing. They want this community. It's not about owning. It's about sharing and happiness growth, not just material growth. So I think my last question um, to ask whether you really think that this has a chance in the near future would be answered with that, right? I definitely think it has a chance because it's very versatile. It works in all kinds of different settings and it works for people who don't have big funding behind them, don't have an investor and as a self-help organization want to bring themselves together, pool their resources and make the most out of them. So you would say it works both in a developed and in a less developed world? Yes, that's the, that's the beauty of the concept, I think. Okay, thank you. Very, thank you very much and enjoy the rest. Thank you.